everybody, this is Ben Songroth with the Learning Technology Center of Illinois, and today we're going to look at some quick tips for using Zoom in your classroom or also for setting up a meeting uh, for professional learning. So first things first, make sure you have the Zoom application downloaded. Um, if you've been invited to a Zoom call before, it'll prompt you to do this anyways. So you've probably already got it, but you can see here's my main Zoom window that I access just from the Zoom application. So when we're talking about good practices for setting this up for something like office hours, to meet with students um, or meetings in general, what we're actually going to look at is how can we use the schedule meeting option here. So when I click schedule a meeting, I get an option here to name my meeting, give it a time, and then several other options. So for example, we can generate a meeting ID or you can have your own personal one, require a password, which would prevent people from accessing your meeting without it. Um, making sure that your video comes on when you join. If you wanted to have that, you can also have it off and then you can enable it later. Um, participants, do their, does their video turn on right away when they join or do you want it to be off? Uh, that's kind of up to you and your preference with either your students or the participants in your uh, uh, PD. Uh, for audio, I would suggest leaving both the telephone and computer options on. Uh, and then I use Google Calendar, so I'm going to sync with Google Calendar. One thing to keep in mind is if you click on advanced options, you do have a couple of things here uh, that is important. Uh, one would be mute participants on entry. If you have a large number of people joining your meeting, this is something that you would want to check. So that way if people join late and you're in the middle of talking, they're already muted when they come in. One of the biggest things that happens in these virtual environments is that people join the meetings and they're not muted. And so you hear different distracting background noises going on while it's going on. So I'm going to leave that. You can also name some alternate hosts. So if you have a co-host to the meeting or somebody else that's going to be uh, wanting hosting uh, permissions, you can uh, add them here. So with that being said, I've got my meeting set up and I'm gonna go ahead and schedule it. And what this does is this will automatically jump over to my Google Calendar and add the event to my Google Calendar. So you can see that my meeting is now in my Google Calendar. So I can click on this and see all of my joining information. So from here, I can actually click this and copy all of this down and then go over to my Google Classroom to then share this link with my students. So I could create a new material, give it a meeting office hours perhaps, and then in the description, paste all of that information in. And then if I wanted to, which I would suggest it's good policy, is to copy this information and add it as a link down here. That way you have two different pieces of information for your students to, to follow to get them into your office hours. And the next thing here is go over to add a topic and make sure you add a topic so it's organized inside of your Google Classroom and hit post. And when you hit post, your students will get the email notification or the alert on their phones or their mobile devices that a new material has been posted in Google Classroom and they will have the link in order to join your Zoom meeting. So that's part one. Let's now look at Zoom and some of the features of Zoom that we can utilize when we're organizing and hosting with students. So I'm actually going to see here at my Zoom platform, um, I could join a new meeting right now or I have my meeting that's coming up at two o'clock. And with that, I could hit start on that meeting and that's how I'm actually going to enable that meeting so my students can join in. They won't be able to join the meeting until I hit start on this. So until you join the meeting, they won't be able to get in. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this meeting there I am now in double vision. Thing options that come up are going to ask me to join with computer audio. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And now I'm already muted. So I have a system preference set up that I mute myself upon entry into all my Zoom meetings. So that way I know that. You can set that up on your own user if you wanted to. But that's not something we're worried about too much. So I'm going to stop the video on this. So that way you don't have to look at me twice. And I'm going to show you a couple of things in here. So as I'm looking around on here, there's a couple of different areas. The first one's gonna be, how do you manage your participants? So I can see here underneath manage participants, who's in my meeting. So if I'm organizing this with students or with other uh, teachers or other adults, um, I would use this area to see who's in my meeting. And then also as the host, you have the ability to mute people from this area or turn their camera off for them. So you can just hover over their name and you can uh, mute them or, or uh, turn their cameras off. You can also see down here you have a mute all and unmute all options. So the participants area is a good way to manage that. And then 
another thing that you can do that's pretty cool is that you can conduct polls. So we're not going to go into too, many, too much detail about this, but just know that you can ask a question to the group using Zoom and it will show up on their screen. It'll automatically pop up and they'll be able to respond to your poll that you're asking them. The next thing here is screen share. So screen share is really important because now this is how we're going to share our screen with our people that we're seeing. So if we wanted to lead some direct instruction or we are using a Google slideshow, we want to use share our screen to do that. So I'll click share screen and then I have two monitors currently hooked up. So that's why you see desktop one and desktop two for me because it's asking me which one do I want to share. So I can you know, pick and choose. So I can have something open on my one monitor and share the other monitor if I wanted to. So that's how I would share these two things. The other thing that's really uh, interesting here is that you can actually share your screen as a whiteboard. And if you uh, do this, your students would actually have access to draw on the whiteboard as well. This could be really cool um, if you wanted them to kind of interact with you. And you can see what this looks like if I share this as a whiteboard. I now have a whiteboard with different options for drawing on it. So you can see I have my you know different stamps that I could do and it drops them in. I have drawing tools that I can draw on and you know I can always go through and erase these things as well. So there's lots of different things adding text. So it's kind of a cool way that you can do it and then you also have the option to save it should you want to save it later. So that's pretty great. So we're gonna go ahead and stop the sharing now back to our original screen here. Um, so just uh, kind of keep that in mind. You can also see that you can allow multiple people to share simultaneously if you wanted to, but I would always keep it to one. It could get kind of confusing. So going along the bottom here, you also have chat. So Zoom chat allows you to uh, have your participants typing back and forth to one another. Uh, what's great about this is your participants can have a conversation while you're presenting. And then at the end of the session, you can also have it saved as a text file. So I do that after some chats that have a lot of resources in them. I'm going to you know, save them as a, a text file so I can go back through and look at them later. So that's chat. Um, it is important to know that you can send private messages in the chat. So you can directly message other people in the room while the general conversation is going on. So that might be something to keep in mind if your kids are chatting back and forth. So we're going to go ahead and close that out. Uh, you do have the option to also record your sessions. So this is something that can be very helpful if you're doing a presentation and you want to record that. Be mindful of student privacy or other people's privacy when you're doing this. Um, you don't want them to be talking or have their picture appear and if they don't want it to be shared with others. Uh, Zoom also allows for breakout rooms, which I think are really great. You as the host have the ability to organize those breakout rooms. So if you wanted to have some special like group sessions with students or kind of isolate them away from the larger group so they can have more intimate conversations, uh, you can allow for breakout rooms. So that's pretty great. Your more options allow you to go live in a different couple of places. We're not going to worry about that too much uh, in regards to this video. Uh, the last thing that I'll show you is that you do have underneath the video options here in the arrow you can tell it which camera you would like to join with. So I have a webcam that I'm having this, or this is my default camera on my Mac, but then they also have this option to choose a virtual background. Now this is pretty cool if your computer can handle it. Uh, so you can see you have different virtual backgrounds here that you can choose from. They also have more that you can add. Uh, you can even bring in pictures or videos from your desktop or from your computer to become your backgrounds, which are pretty cool. Um, and you also, can use a green screen. So you can see my computer actually doesn't meet the requirements to this, so I have to have a green screen in order to use, uh, but it is pretty neat that that's an available option and then something that a lot of people have fun with. These are your other settings. So if you ever wanted to get in here and adjust some settings, you can also see different statistics, um, you know, your video settings. If you wanted to, you know, look at those, you can. Uh, the last thing is the touch up my appearance. So you saw it there, but if you go into video settings, I guess we're just there, you can see there's an option that says touch up my appearance. What that does is that actually kind of cleans it up, puts a little filter on your, uh, on your image that makes you look a little bit better. So that's kind of uh, a fun thing. All right, so those are your quick Zoom options and Zoom features. I hope you found this video helpful when you're getting started with Zoom for the first time. Uh, look for some documentation from the LTC that's gonna be coming out on best tips and tricks uh, for using Zoom in the classroom. Uh, thanks for watching, and as always, in this crazy time of March 2020, wash your hands.